I think it makes the community stronger when everyone comes together hand in hand. After tragedy hits a Lunar New Year celebration in California, people in Denver show some resilience within their community. The city of Denver says starting tomorrow, there will be a limit to how long migrants can stay in city run shelters. And are you tired of the snow? Well, sorry, we have more on the way overnight. Good news is it is nothing like last week. Tonight, 10 people are dead after a shooting at a Lunar New Year celebration in Southern California. After a manhunt leading to a standoff in a different city, police say the situation has ended. They did not say if they've made an arrest. Deputies say during the Lunar New Year celebration early this morning, a gunman went into a ballroom dance studio and shot and killed 10 people. 10 others were hurt. This afternoon, police surrounded and then went into a white van about 40 minutes away in the city of Torrance. Police would not say if anybody was arrested. As we're looking for this suspect, we will not forget the victims and survivors. And it's important because I can, you can just imagine the trauma that they've experienced, and it's our responsibility to wrap our arms uh, around them. Earlier today, deputies released a photo of the suspect, but won't name him, saying they think this will make it harder to arrest. There's another news conference expected a little bit later, about a half hour. We will bring you any updates as we learn them right here on 9 News. Denver also celebrated Lunar New Year this weekend at the Far East Center on Federal Boulevard. In light of what happened in California, organizers in Denver have requested more police. They're also trying to keep some joy and celebration of the holiday front and center. Here's Luis de Leon. You put your own money in and then you feed the dragon. Defining tradition. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Looks different for many. So fa choy sounds like bok choy, which means good luck and prosperity coming to you all year round. For Mimi Luong, it means hosting a Lunar New Year celebration. What today means to my family is that we are here to be able to share joy and happiness with the community and let them know about our traditions. Her family has put this on for more than 30 years, nearly as long as they've owned the Far East Center. It is a time of reflection, uh, is symbolize the time with friends and family, togetherness. But amid the colorful shops and eager crowds, I found out on the news. It's hard to ignore that tragedy hit close to home. Well, thank you for being here. She says she requested Denver police officers to help with security at their celebration. They call that the dragon. Due to what happened in Southern California. But Luong hopes that an important tradition like this continues to provide a sense of understanding and resilience. I feel like people would now want to go out more often and learn more about culture. To me, I feel like no matter what goes on, we should still continue to bring joy to everyone in this community. I think it makes the community stronger when everyone comes together hand in hand. Defining this tradition with unity. Luong adds that DPD and her family really have been working together for really the last few years for when it comes to large events at the Far East Center. Jenny, as far as today goes, she believes that as the attendance grows, so does the number of events around town. She says she personally has noticed more uh, schools actually hosting Lunar New Year events in the area. All right, Luis, thank you. Let's take a live look outside this afternoon. We just got through a week filled with snow, still some of it in our backyard here at Nine News, but some of us will be getting just a little bit more overnight. The city of Denver plans to have its plows out on the roads through tomorrow to make sure the main streets are clear. And since the snow total should be low, the city says they will not be going out onto residential streets this time. Perhaps, Lauren, we won't really need it. You know, I'm going to maybe take the unpopular opinion and side with the city. I don't think the neighborhoods will really need much work after okay. the little bit of snow we're going to get early tomorrow. Most of the stuff is going to stay in the mountains and the southwestern corner of the state. We'll just see spotty snow showers overnight and into the day tomorrow morning. Let's go ahead and take a look at our current conditions, though. We're dry, a little bit of cloud cover out there, 20 degrees. It feels like nine, though, with winds coming in from the southeast at 10 miles per hour. So still very chilly despite the drier 
clear evening we're having. Now as we take a look at our HD Doppler radar, take a look off to the west. This little system here, that's what's going to spit our next round of snow showers into the state. Again, the majority of this is going to fall further southwest. Right now, no one's seeing any snow, just that cloud cover pushing in ahead of the precipitation. And even once that snow makes its way into the front range, we're looking at a small dusting. The only area that's going to see those higher totals, again, the southwestern corner of the state. This is going to be Abajo and San Juan Mountains, where they are under winter weather advisories from 8 o'clock this evening until 5 o'clock tomorrow evening. That's going to be for snow totals of around 4 to 10 inches, isolated higher totals of around 12 inches. But again, once that makes its way further eastward, we're just looking at a quick dusting by midday tomorrow. All of that moves out. We dry out tomorrow night, and then we have another round of light snow pushing in Tuesday. Outside of that, we have a cold week ahead, even when we're not seeing those snow showers. So I'll have details on everything we can expect just ahead of my full seven day forecast. All right, Lauren, thank you. Tomorrow is the first deadline day for migrants in the city of Denver in those Denver run city shelters. Two weeks ago, the city started a new rule that will limit people to a 14 day stay in a shelter. The city says they're not going to kick people out who don't have a place to live, but they're working with people on alternative solutions like finding volunteers to host. People still live in, in living in these shelters are saying, though, that they're worried about trying to make a plan in an unfamiliar city. No es suficiente el tiempo, de verdad que 14 días es muy poco tiempo para para nosotros porque se acaban los 14 días, entonces nosotros qué vamos a hacer? Si no tenemos familia en, en en este país, entonces vamos a salir con estos fríos. Eh, no sé qué vamos a hacer con la comida. Es bastante peligroso también para nosotros. Each person's 14 day stay, that limit will be different depending on the day they arrived at the shelter. Loveland police are still looking for three people that they believe were involved in a shooting of two teenagers this weekend, which killed one of those teenagers. They're also looking for this white Dodge Ram truck. Police say this happened around 10:15 Friday night at the Brookstone apartment complex on East First Street in Loveland. Police say two of those suspects shot and killed an 18 year old, then stole his car and then crashed it into another car in the parking lot. There was a teenager inside that second car too, a 16 year old. Police say they also shot him, but he survived. And then police say the suspects bailed on the stolen car and then drove off in that white Dodge Ram that they first arrived in. They do not know much about these suspects, but believe they are young men and that there's no evidence the suspects knew the victims. A young man is in custody tonight accused of murder in the death of a 16 year old girl last month. Tayana Manuel was found dead outside an apartment complex in the Green Valley Ranch neighborhood of Denver the day after Christmas. Her family had reported her missing just a few days before. Now, because the suspect in this case that's been arrested is younger than 18, police at this time will not be releasing his name or a picture. It's now a lot easier to get all kinds of information about the Denver Police Department. This past week, the department put out an online dashboard with details about things like internal affairs investigations, shootings where officers use their guns, even call response times. The new police chief says this is both a way for them to work on earning better public trust and a response to a recent state law. Back in 2020, the state passed a law requiring all law enforcement agencies to start using body worn cameras and they have to report some data to the state every year. DPD says this dashboard will both satisfy that mandate and let the public access this information sooner and more easily. Yeah, I hope again that it adds a layer of transparency and um, and that allows people to, to see what we're doing, see that we're holding ourselves accountable, see that we're measuring response times and doing everything that we can to reduce those response times. The dashboard will also soon have use of force data for incidents that were deadly, but police still were not deadly, excuse me, but use some kind of force in those scenarios. I asked the chief if we can expect that this dashboard will include cases from those protests back in 2020, and Chief Thomas said yes. In a mountain town about two hours southwest of Denver, many people have not gotten their mail for weeks. A big part of that is because of staffing problems. This past week, Buena Vista got a few temporary mail carriers, plus some help from other USPS locations. But as 9 News reporter Katie Eastman explains, there is still a long way to go. There's that mail carrier motto about nothing getting in the way of their appointed rounds. Neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom. But that saying doesn't cover everything. What is the deal with your mail right now? <laughs> 
I don't know. Katie um, Drawbridge lives in Buena Vista, where postal problems persist. And then lately, probably within the past two weeks, we haven't received anything. No junk mail, no letters, no anything that we've ordered. It's not weather getting in the way of delivery in Katie's mountain town. It's very frustrating. A USPS spokesperson in Colorado says it's staffing. James Boxrud wrote in an email, Buena Vista's post office is short half their staff. They've got openings for two full-time carriers, four substitute carriers, and three clerks. The job posting for a carrier says salaries start at $24.42 an hour. Unfortunately for people in Buena Vista, the issue isn't new. Nothing, four days. This was in August last year. We've been having problems, honestly, for at least two years. Fox Red says because these are national jobs, they can't offer any kind of local incentives to hire people in specific areas. We're just a little town, but um, we definitely should get our mail. For now, the postmaster is prioritizing medicine deliveries, and USPS is sending a few employees from other locations to Buena Vista for two to three weeks. I would nice day. You too. Yeah. Katie Eastman, Nine News. On Tuesday, the town's mayor will address this mail issue at a board of trustees meeting. People are invited to attend that meeting and weigh in during public comment.